Okay, uh, so I always get this question every semester from at least a, a couple of people. Um, why use PHP? You're going to see, depending on where you are in the class right now, you're going to see that, um, you know, in the very beginning when I'm showing you how to do really simple uh, strings and variables and sort of really simple mathematical operations, you might ask, what's the point? You know, why wouldn't I just, if I'm going to take the time to do all this conditional logic and to set variables and then just announce them, why wouldn't I just, um, you know, do that in hard-coded HTML? Well, the reason is because actually what we're doing in the beginning of this class is going to be sort of foundational and it's going to be very basic. And it's the kind of baby steps that you have to take before we can understand a little bit more complex things. And uh, the websites that run, you know, using PHP, they very often are quite complex and they do quite complex things and they do the kinds of things that there's no way a hard-coded HTML website could do. So I'm going to show you a couple of, of examples. Um, there are lots and lots of examples out there, but I'm going to just show you a couple of examples of why PHP is useful. Um, so the first one I've got up is this Kelly Blue Book and, you know, uh, years ago, I mean, I can remember a time, I sort of date myself by saying that, but I can remember a time when this kind of website wasn't even possible. Um, and because there was no way of doing dynamic decision tree uh, kinds of decision making. And what PHP allows us to do is to put stuff in a database. Whether we use a database or not, it still allows us to do a lot of different kinds of conditional logic where you know we don't have to be there to handhold and make the help the user make decisions. We just sort of do interface design so that we can de de design a, a good interface that has great usability. You know where we sort of try to predict the way that users are going to use a website and try to answer all of the questions and solve all the problems for them before they have those questions and problems. And Part of that is being able to give them a lot of options for, say, filtering or, you know, storing data in a database so they've got a lot of stuff at their fingertips. And that kind of thing can't really be done very efficiently um, whenever you're just hard coding in HTML and, and you don't have a lot of different options. Um, PHP is just one of many scripting languages, so it's not that you can't do this without PHP, it's that you can't do a lot of the stuff I'm going to show you without some sort of advanced scripting conditional logic. So let's look at Kelly Blue Book. Like I said, this couldn't have existed, you know, many, many years ago um, because, you know, before you had PHP and database driven websites, I mean, there's just no way that you could end up with this many pages. So if you want to think about how many pages uh, a website like this might have, you could think about any single link that you follow being a page. So if I click, say, on car values, all right, and it resolves out to be something up here in the URL, that's a page, okay? Anytime I get something, let's even do something a little bit more complicated. What should I pay for a new car? What's my car worth? So it gives me these different options. So let's look at, I'm just going to pick some things, a um, model of an Acura, okay, and I'll click Next. And whenever it takes me to this page, this is actually a page as well. Okay, so let's just put in some zip code. And then it gives me another page. And if you look closely at this website, you could literally probably have millions of different types of pages. Now, and that's because anytime there is a link with a, a result at the end that turns out to be a page, that literally is a page. Even if it means that it's being pulled from t template parts and the data is being pulled out of a database, it assembles itself into an actual page. And so to deliver the, the content in a single page, you know, the way that you maybe have known how to do it in the past with HTML, you would literally have to hard code all of that stuff. Well, without, 
you know, pulling pieces and parts together with templates and database uh, data, that that would be pretty much impossible to do something that could li literally come out to be thousands and thousands of pages. And oh, it gets updated probably on a daily basis. How could any single person or any group of people really even manage that in a very efficient way? So that is the reason. Like, so I just want to give you some. Let's just let's try to do something where we're going to sell our car. Okay. Well, actually, I'm. If I look at this page, it looks like this might take me somewhere else. If I hover over help me sell my car quickly, you'll notice down in the status bar, it's going to take me to tradein.autotrader.com. So technically it's gonna to go to an affiliate separate website. So let's not do that. Let's just stay within this exact same web page. So let's go to look at car values and we're gonna to go to either new and used car prices or let's do trade in and private party value pricing. Okay, so it takes me to this page and First of all, it you'll notice that it has year available, but down down below everything else is grayed out. Well, that's because it's going to look into a database and it's going to find all of the records where it has years available for those records. And it looks like it goes back to 1992. And it's not even going to let me choose anything else until I select the year because that's the first way that it's going to filter. So let's just choose, I don't know, 2007. And then based on 2007, I get a certain selection. Now, if I were to go back to 1997, then I might not see something, let's say, like Hummer. Let's go, instead of 2007, let's go all the way back to 92, in fact. And you'll notice that Hummer is not on this list. So one of the things that is really important to understand when it's grabbing data from the database is that it's literally making decisions based on the data that is available. And so to give you some concept of how many different possible pages we could just get from just this little list, um, and forget the whole mileage thing, but just this list, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we've, anyway, we've got a whole bunch of years all right, going back to 92. That's a lot of years of cars, all right? Every one of those those years have probably at least this many makes for each year, okay? And then for each one of these makes, let's just choose a make. Let's just choose Alfa Romeo. For each one of these makes, oh, that's not a good example. Let's choose Chevrolet. Look at all of these models that exist, and that's just for one make in one year, all right? And so if you could imagine... Um, just choosing something, let's choose a Beretta, okay? This is just one option. Let's just say that this thing is like golden and it's only got like 10,000 miles on it. And if I click next, it's going to result in a page. So if you can imagine all of the choices that I could have had, and what happens is up here is it goes and it loads a set of templates, right, that where it's looking at styles, and then this question mark is a query mark saying, okay, load this styles page template where intent equals trade trade in, okay, and the mileage is 10,000, and also, just so you know, it did, it had to pass this other information, which is passed right here, okay, so it knows to go and grab this information from the database before it even gets to know what my intent is and what the mileage is. So if you can imagine all the possible choices that are up here, oh, and that Chevy Beretta 1992, okay? It's just, it literally, it's mind boggling. Oh, and then you get to that one make and model, and then you have other choices, my goodness, right? You get to figure out, okay, well, was it a two-door? Was it a GT two-door? Was it a, right? Okay, my goodness, let's choose some style. I'll choose the GTZ Coupe, okay? All right, it's gonna take me to another page. I think you maybe can start to see now when you see all of these additional options. Okay, well then it, based on that particular model, it loads in another set of data from the database that show all the features that came with that particular make, model, and 
whatever you want to call it, subset of the model, right? And then you can say, oh no, well I had, I had a cassette player because I was like really ahead of the time back then, right? Oh, and I had leather and I had uh, cruise control and all of this stuff, right? And then you go and you say that we had a red car or something, I don't know. And then you go to look at the blue book value and you have to go through all of those filters to give it all of that information so that you can finally get, oh, get to this point. Oh, who? what are we doing? Are we doing a trade-in or selling to a private party? Let's see what the private party is. And then we can go. And it tells me that it's 3% and it's in excellent condition. And, right? And so it gives me my final blue book value. Right? So this is insane. Like, it, this is an incredible amount of information. And, you know, and, it, and then it tells you about how much it, the thing would be worth. I mean, there's no way, you know, that this could have existed, a, you know, a fair number of years ago, right? This is pretty, this is a pretty intense amount of information and it's all at user's control, right? That's pretty amazing too. So, uh, you know, just to give you some kind of understanding, now I think you have a better idea of how, you know, what I mean when I say this could literally end up in thousands and thousands and thousands probably, I'm guessing, probably somewhere in the millions of pages based on all of the options that you have to choose from. And that's just, that was just getting trade-in and private party value. That wasn't doing this or doing something else. Like that's pretty, that's pretty intense if you ask me. So now if we jump back and we go back to, okay, me telling you how to write a variable, set a variable that's called name and name equals Lee, and then echo name, and then on the screen it prints the word Lee. Well, that's when I get the kinds of questions from students going, why do I care? Why do I need to know this? Why couldn't I just print that with H regular old HTML? Why? Well, because ultimately you get to a place where you can do way cooler things than echoing out a variable right? You get to where you can be pulling in information from a database and then you echo out tons and tons of variables. You click on a form and you, you're you able to pass variables to the next page so that it can parse it and do something more interesting with it. Um, and that's pretty much what we're doing in this website. So it hopefully this will sort of answer that question. I mean, granted, this site is kind of like my example on steroids. I mean, it's a pretty it's a pretty intense website in terms of, you know, being super data heavy. Um, you know, not all websites are this complex, right? But this, I think, really helps drive the point home immediately. There are websites that are, you know, far smaller that are also, you know, in some ways very complex and, you know, th in ways that you couldn't possibly do them as hard coded HTML. Another example, a very simple example. Let's not look at Auto Trader. Let's actually look at this one. Lee caught. Well, let's do. Let's actually do. Learn the the one for our website. This website. If you go and you were to look at tutorials, let's just look at software tutorials. All of these things, all of these uh, menu options, they're being pulled from a database based on categories of tutorials that I've created. So let's say that I want to look at, um, I don't know, I want to look at like ZAMP tutorials, okay? Well, it's going to pull up all of the returned options for ZAMP tutorials, things that mention it, all right? and so. Even just this website, all right, this is not Kelly Blue Book, but for me to ever even consider trying to do, you know, the, the massive amount of content that I have on this website without some kind of conditional programming, it's just sort of mind boggling. So anyway, hopefully this will get you started in your understanding of why we're doing the stuff that we're doing and these foundational baby steps. Um, uh, it's just one of those things you got to begin at the begin, right? So anyway, um, feel free to continue the discussion or ask me more questions about it on a discussion board. Okay, bye.